Hi, I'm Josh. I'm with Power Equipment Direct. I'm the air compressor expert here. I've been here with about five years, been the expert for about three. I'm here with Mr. Dave North launching our new Avoc brand. Dave, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself? Thanks, Josh. Yeah, I'm Dave North. I've been in the industry for almost 40 years. I've been with Quincy Compressor for a little more than 16 years. Quincy Compressor is a sister company of Avox. We share engineering expertise, uh, marketing expertise, and so forth. So there's a lot of synergy between our companies. Atlas Copco purchased Avoc in 2007. Atlas Copco is the parent company. Uh, we've got brand new products, brand new innovative technology. That we're going to utilize PED as our partner to launch this brand into the entire North American marketplace. So uh, I don't think there's anybody else that would do this as well with us together. So we're very, very excited about that. We are too. We've been working together for a while with Quincy and Atlas, um, and now we're launching new Avoc. What makes a relationship so special in terms of how we operate together? Yeah. Well, when I first found you folks back in 2008, <laughs> we started with really nothing. So over the, the past 15 years, we've developed an incredible partnership. There are a lot of things that make PED very unique. Your biggest strength is your ability to bring brand new product, brand new technology to the marketplace is really second to nobody. But also I think we actually do work very closely together on new products, new ideas, new promotions and so forth. So it's been, it's been a terrific really partnership and it's just con continues to get better. What makes Avox special from the other sister companies? Well, particularly with this new Avox line of rotary screws starting down at three horsepower and portables. Mm -hmm. What really is innovative is this new technology we call integrated block. The integrated block allows us to eliminate the majority of all potential leak points. It allows the machine to be much more efficient. It's much smaller and compact. It's designed to be very, very easy to work on. Plus, we Perfect. use um, a special high pressure die cast process to make the two parts that build up this integrated block. Mm -hmm. The reason we do that is because its ability to heat up really quickly and also to cool down more, uh, very quickly. What that enables us to do is Users who might be afraid of using a rotary screw where the duty of the compressor is somewhat intermittent, we don't have to worry about that nearly as much with this new Abach integrated block design. Yeah, that'll allow a lot more of our customers to be able to utilize a rotary that haven't been able to in the past. They can finally make that leap into the yeah. rotary market. Yeah, and with this technology, it becomes more reliable. It's more energy efficient. So there's really nothing, it's a lot of upside. It does take a lot of engineering innovation in terms of getting it done. It's very expensive to build up and invest in all the tooling to get that done. But Abax, we've decided that's what we want to do because this is really, it's really the compressor design of the future. Yeah, it, I've seen it and it looks fantastic on the inside. We're very proud of our partnership with Abak here. We're going to be carrying 20 different SKUs. Can you tell us a little bit about what we're going to actually be carrying from Abak? Sure. We start at three horsepower. Mm -hmm. We go from three to five to seven and a half to 10, 15, and 20, all the way up through 20 horsepower. We'll have them in several different configurations. One will have a base mount, just the actual air end and configuration itself. Mm -hmm. Secondly, we'll have a tank mounted version of that that looks just like this, essentially, but without, without the dryer. And then third, we'll have a tank mounted with dryer version. So a base mount, a tank mount, and a tank mount with dryer. We do offer a unique product, a three horsepower, 24 gallon on wheels. That's quite radically different than anything yeah. else that's ever been in the market. But those are the primary offerings. And we do offer those units in, as we talked about before, mm -hmm. 125, 150, and 175 PSI. Can you tell us a little bit more about that smaller one? Sure, yeah. Whenever you get into the small portable sector, mm -hmm. they're all piston machines. Mm -hmm. uh, again, because they're piston machines, they have a little bit lim more limited duty cycle. Mm -hmm. uh, they're also fairly heavy. Uh, we've got a small three horsepower on a 24 gallon tank mm -hmm. that utilizes this integrated block technology. The reason we're able to offer this SKU to begin with is because in using integrated block technology, everything has been shrunk down so much smaller that can we, we can easily fit it, fit it on a, a small 24 gallon tank. What that enables someone to do, now it's powered by 220 volt only, mm -hmm. single phase, mm -hmm. but they're able to roll something around in a portable application uh, as long as they've got the power for it and it can run 24 seven nonstop. 
So it's going to run cool, it's going to run, run very, very quietly, and it can run all day long without any issues at all. So that's very unique, very, very innovative. The market's never, ever seen anything like this before. So we're pretty excited. How is Avac able to develop that? There's so many air compressor companies trying to innovate. What made Avac so special to come up with something like this? Well, I think a lot of it is, it's, it's, it's really driven by innovative engineering and then approach to the marketplace. If you look at Abak, that's there's you know Abak is 75 years old. Mm -hmm. Quincy is north of 100 years old. So there's a lot of experience, a lot of expertise in terms of this technology. A lot of it is just making a decision to do something innovative. So we knew that if we could develop something, again, you got a lot of horsepower behind this in terms of the engineering to develop this. It is no easy task. But once we made the commitment, we were able to come up with the design. Uh, then once you make the design, you've got to make a significant financial commitment to tool it properly because the tooling can be very expensive. Mm -hmm. But, you know, I, I think the real uh, benefit that, or advantage we've had is having so much experience, so much innovative thinking when it comes to getting something like this done. We just made a decision to do it. Don't think it's any more complicated than that. Yeah. All right, let's take a look inside and let's see what it's all about. Can you walk us through some of these pieces, what everything is? Sure. Uh, what we see right here is the actual air end itself, where okay. the two screws are, are located. Mm -hmm. There's a shaft that goes out here, out into a uh, pulley. The motor is down here, covered up by this steel plate with a, a pulley that goes out here. And then there's a belt in between that connects them. Here's your air filter. We got an oil filter. We got a water separator all the way in the back. These two parts are what make up the integrated block. So we have one part at the bottom, one part at the top. Here's your separator in the back that's all part of the same casting. Uh, the reason it's more efficient is because it's running significantly cooler. You are also eliminating any pressure drop because of the way we move the air through the channels rather than going through all these hoses. There's gonna be less load in the motor that we know is gonna save energy. Yeah. Kind of difficult to quantify exactly how much that will say, but it, we, yeah. know, we know that that will help. It's got a very special design on the separator, a dome top, which more effectively uh, separates out the oil from the air, which during that entire process, it's going gonna, it's gonna to make the unit much more what we call thermally efficient. Mm. So it's pretty dramatic. It's easy, as you can tell, it's very easy to access. Yeah, so, you can easily see your oil right here, so you yep. don't have to really dig around for the oil sight glass. So you yep. have that right there. Uh, one of the beauties about this, we've mentioned before, is how easy it is to take care of. Yeah. But also, let's suppose you need to do a little bit of a belt adjustment, nothing to it. Loosen up these two belts, turn that screw, get it to the point where you want the, the, where the belt is uh, as tight as you'd like it, tighten those back up again, and you're off to the races. When it's time to change the oil, you got a little thumb switch right here with a oil bleeder valve. You open that up, drain this up, drain this into a receptacle. When you're done, turn that off. There's a bolt right in here that you take off and you pour your oil in. It's designed to make it very easy to work on, long lasting, yeah. fewer chances of any any oil leakage and so forth so yeah getting in there you can easily do that you don't have to cram your hands in there trying That's to right. go under something um, yep. you can easily get to these filters right here and this air filter you don't have to try and contort your body into there it's it really it's the simplest most accessible easiest rotary screw package on the market to work on and take good care of and typically what, what happens is if it's easier to take care of they take care of it better Here's the controller. So uh, once you get this hooked up and, and operating properly, this will kind of walk you through the sequence. It's very intuitive, easy, okay. to, easy to operate, easy to understand. Here's the information for the dryer. This is a tank mounted with dryer version. It's a 10 horsepower. So this will give us the dew point. Uh, it's got an on off switch here. Everything is accessible from the front panel. It, it really couldn't be much easier. Okay, so here's the electrical panel. We just turn these to tighten them down, but you open it up. It's easy to work on. All of our three-phase Abak machines are tri-voltage, so uh, it can be run on 200, 208, 230, or 460. Any changes you need to make in the wiring uh, are done in here. Very, very simple to do. Then it also comes with a wiring diagram inside the cabinet as well that the electrician can reference to yep. make sure you can switch the voltages and everything really nice and easy. Yeah. Comes with a nice pigtail with uh, all your wiring. No need to get inside the box to do any of that stuff. That's, uh, that's easy to access and ready to go. The dryer works off 115 volt standard household current. Comes with a long cord, just plug it in, run your air lines into the back of the dryer, you're done. 
you're ready to go. With the condensate coming out of the dryer, mm -hmm. just that run this into a receptacle, that's it. Really, really is um, designed and built to be very easy to install, to operate, and to take care of. Yeah, everything is so much easier than a lot of other rotaries that you see out in the market. Yeah. Um, just easy access, the panels are open, everything you can easily just get into and just quickly install. What's the significance of like the aluminum construction as opposed to, you know, here you hear about cast iron? Yeah, there's a place for cast iron and aluminum. The air end itself is all cast iron. The reason we use aluminum down here is because uh, we, it's all about heat. Mm -hmm. We want it to be, it'd be able to heat up quickly and we want it to cool off quickly. Aluminum will do that much better, much more uh, favorable thermally than cast iron is. Cast iron is great where you have durability mm -hmm. uh, that you're concerned with. It's, it's really optimal for doing anything re regarding heat dissipation. We want this to heat up quickly because mm -hmm. the more quickly it comes up to operating temperature, the, the more effective the oil is going to be through the air end. It's going to seal better. Mm -hmm. We want it to cool off quickly because usually in the cooling off process, we have moisture that drops out through the air end and we want it to cool off quickly because the more quickly it does that, the less likely it is you're going to have any condensation problems inside mm -hmm. this machine. And it's condensation that ultimately affects the life of the air end. Yeah, and that's when, I think that's when you spoke about somebody that couldn't go into a rotary before might want to, that yeah. moisture content's going to definitely be much less. They won't right. have that issue that they might have had on a standard rotary. Yeah. What applications would you want to be putting this in for the lineups we're going to be carrying? Well, certainly it can go into any application that's currently using a rotary screw. Mm -hmm. Now, as a matter of focus, we're focused primarily on automotive and light industrial. Okay. That doesn't mean it cannot go into heavy, heavy industrial applications. It just means because of the horsepower ranges we're currently offering this in, we'll tend to focus more on automotive and light industrial. So what does that mean? Automotive, body shops are a perfect place for this. Dealerships are a perfect place oh, for yeah. this. Anybody who's doing a lot of sandblasting and painting, that's, that's a perfect application. Talking about light industrial, this could easily go into uh, any process facility, perhaps uh, assembly facilities. You may have 10, 15 people working. The only thing you want to be a little wary of with any rotary screw is you want to make sure it's, it's in an environment where you don't have a lot of filth or dirt in the air. But it can go in any, any of those applications. But again, marketing focus wise, automotive and light industrial. So say you got this new ABAC in your body shop and yep. you're replacing a rotary with this brand new ABAC. How is it going to be more efficient? What's the most efficient part about this? Is like, what is gonna save them time, money, energy, anything like that? Well, I think whether we're talking about the automotive marketplace or the industrial marketplace, mm -hmm. downtime is the thing that everybody worries about, right? Yeah. So with this design, because we've eliminate, been able to eliminate parts and create a, a new efficiencies, the likelihood of downtime is far less than we would find with a conventional rotary. Secondly, to do maintenance on it is very fast and very easy. So less downtime, very simple and easy to take care of. And also we didn't mention it before, but particularly in automotive, they don't necessarily need it, but they'd like to see machines with 175 PSI. Yeah. Well, we offer them. The Outback will have a 125, a 150, and a 175 offering in all the different horsepowers. Has all the advantages of a regular rotary in terms of being quiet. It loves to, to run. It can run a 24 hour duty cycle without any issues. But again, the biggest advantage is the far less likelihood of any issues, ease of maintenance, more efficiency. I think those are probably the primary whims. Yeah, definitely. Anybody that's done their own maintenance kind of knows that you want something easy to work on, something simple that you can go in, do yourself if you can, or your maintenance person coming in and they don't give you a headache trying to do the maintenance on your machine. All the other machines are much more difficult to work on, uh, which again makes this much more user friendly. But again, what you really want is no downtime at all. Yeah. That's why this is such a winner. Yeah, so we've talked a lot about a product. Say a customer has ordered the product. How does it come really shipped? And what do customers need to look for when getting it delivered to them? What should they keep an eye out for? And what do you want them to do when they get it? So regardless if it's an Abach or a Quincy or an Ingersoll Rand or a Roll Air, I think all of your vendors would like the customer to closely inspect the unit before they accept it. Typically the truck drivers are in a rush. There's a lot of pressure for you to sign that piece of paper and then they're, go they're gone. Don't let that happen. Okay. Well, regardless of what their approach is, you say, hey, I'm going to take 10 or 15 minutes to take things off of, you might take the plastic bag off of it mm -hmm. to look at any potential damage from freight. And if you see damage from freight, at least if it's with, with our product, we'd ask you to refuse the shipment. Okay. That's the best thing to do. 
Document it on the bill of lading, why you're refusing it, and, and go ahead and refuse it. Notify you guys that, hey, you've yep. re refused it and why, and we'll take it from there. But once you accept it, then it's trouble in River City because now it's going to be a dispute between when did the damage happen? Was it the freight carrier? Was it the end user who actually did it? So that's, that's trouble. You want to make sure. And by the way, some people buy these things and they may not install them for three or four months. What happens if it's three or four months later when you discover hit concealed damage? So even if it's not going to be used immediately, do the inspection. Don't let the truck driver hustle you. Do the inspection. If everything looks good, sign off on it. You'll be good. That's Yeah, that's perfect. And a lot of things you also want to look at is the pallet. Make sure the pallet's in good condition. Because yep. if the pallet is broken somewhere, it either fell through or something might have gone wrong with the shipping damage. So definitely look at the pallet. It comes bolted to the pallet. Some come crated, some come wrapped. Yep. Um, so just make sure you look over it. Um, very, very, very important. Yep. Well, thank you for showing us around the machine today. We're really excited about launching the new product. We're thrilled to do it. We're, we're uh, very excited about launching the Sabak program with, with PED. But they're going to love the Abak machine. It's so easy to take care of, easy to use, easy to install. So many benefits to the end user. I think everybody's going to be really excited about it. Thank you again for being here and showing, yep. showing us around the new Abak machine we're going to be launching here soon. Yep. Thanks a lot. Thank you. <laughs>